Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here with some surprise cut candidates for today's show. Now, two quick housekeeping notes. One, if we're doing a surprise cut candidates video, they have to be surprise players. So don't get super pissed if you're like, there's no way that guy's going to get cut. Yeah, that's kind of the whole point of surprise cut candidates. I'm not going to go out the cowardly way and just pick a bunch of UDFAs. That's not really in spirit with surprise cut candidates. Also, handful of these guys, I don't necessarily agree with being a potential cut candidate, and I'll explain that in the video. But some of these names are coming from you, the people, commenting on a previous video, some possible cut candidates. So, first one up is Michael Ojemudia. Do not throw anything at your screen. I do not believe Michael Ojemudia will be cut, but he does fall under the umbrella of he could be a candidate, and he would be a surprise cut candidate. Now, if we look at Ojemudia's career, former third-round pick out of Iowa, that I thought got off to a bang to start his NFL career, being a contributor early in that 2020 season, and then 2021 was a different story. Got hurt in training camp and just never was able to get into a rhythm, only played two games down the stretch for the Broncos last year. You can look at the stats. He had some great plays in his rookie season, not so much more of a sophomore slump this past year. Now, when we look at this current depth chart here, I'm going to guess that the Broncos will likely take six corners. Now, we are seeing a trend of defensive coordinators go with an extra DB set, right? More nickel and dime packages, take a linebacker off and put a DB on. So maybe Peyton wants to steal one spot from the linebacker room and allocate it to the cornerback room here. Now, unfortunately, the reason why Ojemudia is getting a little bit of buzz as a potential surprise cut candidate he didn't have a great preseason week one. It is preseason, all right? He was flagged for pass interference, gave up an 18-yard completion. No, if you have a bad preseason game, that does not put you on the hot seat. But it is surprise cut candidate. So sometimes you got to kind of like pull a little bit and pull a little bit of string and run a mile with it. Here is my projection for what this Broncos DB room ultimately looks like. I think the obvious PS2, Darby, and K1 Williams make the roster, along with Ojemudia, and two rookies, Damari Mathis and Fan Hicks. Those are my six guys making the roster. I have Ojemudia making it, but I could see why someone would make the argument for him being a potential cut candidate. Now, before we check out the rest of surprise cut candidates, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, drop a Let's Ride. And for everyone watching, if you hate the Raiders, like the video. Everyone has to fall under this umbrella. So follow your orders, subscribe, comment Let's Ride, and like today's video. All right, next surprise cut candidate. Again, it is surprising, which is what the nature of the video is. So I put Tyree Cleveland on this video because I, for one, would be a surprise if he were to be cut. Some more than others, not as surprised as Ojemudia, but he has been out with a throat injury. And it always sucks when injuries are the ultimate reason why maybe players don't make the 53-man roster. But the best ability in the NFL is availability. Now, I could see the Broncos maybe putting him on IR, sort of stashing him for the season so that they can hold on to him for another year. He's getting a little bit older, right? I mean... Drafted in 2020, so this is his third training camp. Well, third technical training camp. We didn't have one in rookie year, but you get the point. Maybe they put him on IR to go, hey, we don't think you actually have a spot on this roster, so let's milk this injury, stash you on IR. That way you're still under control, and we can see what you got fresh slate going into 2023. If I had to project it, I'll put these six guys making the roster. A lot can change, of course as more games and training camp gets underway, but the obvious handful names of Sutton, Judy, Hamler. I think Kendall Hinton, especially after that Cowboys game, has pretty much locked himself in for a roster spot at this point. Montreal Washington, another lock, a rookie. And then I've got Seth Williams. I kind of tossed and turned between Seth Williams and Brandon Johnson, the UDFA, but ultimately I think the vet gets a roster spot and Brandon Johnson 
is on the practice squad this year, and then looks to come back next year on an inside track to make the 53-man roster. Now, speaking of wide receivers, who is your favorite Broncos wide receiver of all time? I'm going to go with Demarius Thomas, a legend. I'm putting 88 down in the comments. But let me know who your favorite Broncos wideout is all time. You can go back as far as you would like. All right, next surprise cut candidate is Malik Reed. This is a name that's been talked about a lot the last couple of weeks of, hey, what's going to happen with this player? Because when you just look at his stats, I mean, if you had a casual, not even a Broncos fan looking at this, that wouldn't look like someone who would be a cut candidate, right? Five sacks last year. He was the team's sack leader in 2020 with eight sacks, but he might be being edged out of the edge rusher position. No pun intended because right when you got Randy Gregory, Bradley Chubb, you know they're making the roster. Nick Benito's making the roster. Baron Browning is, I mean, especially after that Cowboys game, he's absolutely making this roster. That's four locks right there. I have Malik Reed making the roster because I just think he's too good of a player to get cut altogether. But the one caveat I will add is if what we talked about earlier, what if Peyton wants to go, yeah, let's get a seventh corner on this team or a fifth safety, and that ultimately comes at a price of one less edge rusher? I don't think that's a very smart decision, especially when we've seen the history of Randy Gregory and Bradley Chubb, which is not a lot of availability at times. I would hold on to extra edge rushers when you've got that sort of history between Gregory and Chubb. But speaking of Malik Reed, there have been trade rumors surrounding him for quite some time right now. Do you think the Broncos should trade him? They've only got five picks in the 2023 NFL Draft. So if someone like, say, the Minnesota Vikings wants to offer you a pick for a player who is kind of buried on your depth chart, he's not even edge rusher number three. It looks like that role belongs to uh, Baron Browning. Maybe get something for a guy who might ride your bench for the most of the season. All right, next cut candidate is Mike Purcell. Defensive tackle started last season alongside Shelby Harris. That run defense was just a little soft at times. In fact, we have two defensive tackles. We can sort of just lump together here. So let's include here, Patrick, we'll get Mike Purcell, and then we'll also toss the other name on right now. Um, because it's not just Purcell. It's also on the interior defensive line, McTelvin Ajim. Third round pick out of Arkansas. Everyone give it up for Seeps. New producer on the ones and twos, and he's killing it. But McTelvin Ajim and Mike Purcell, two surprise cut candidates. One is because Purcell is making a decent amount of coin, and Ajim, third round pick, cut him this quickly? That would be a surprise to me. Now, last year, neither player really stood out. Ajim only played in seven games. Deshaun Williams was the basically the starting opposite defensive tackle for most of the season up until getting hurt at the end of last season. And Purcell, he just didn't live up to the contract extension that he got. And George Payton might go, hey, we can save a little bit of change if we were to move on from Purcell. He carries a $4.3 million cap hit for 2022 and only a dead cap hit of $1.5 million. So you got three-ish million dollars worth of savings to be had if you were to cut Mike Purcell. Now the question is, all right, you want to save that money. Are you going to spend it on something? Or it's not a bad problem to have to have too much depth at one, posi well, at one position. Because if DJ Jones goes down, I'm a lot more comfortable with Purcell being the next guy up. Which is why I have him staying on this roster. Ajim. Keep an eye on it. I know this is a little bit too ambitious. It's a third-round pick, but he has not really impressed me all that much. And you're seeing a UDFA, Deshaun Williams, take his job and take the starting role, the opposite uh, five-technique defensive end of Draymond Jones. Right now, I've got six guys making the roster um, on the interior defensive line. The rookie, Matt Henningsen, out of Wisconsin, Purcell. And then your fifth-round pick out of Iowa State, Ioma Uazuke. Ua, no, I got this right. Wazurike. Okay, I can get it. I can get it. EU as I like to call him. But right now, Ajim, I would be surprised if he were to get cut. I'm probably wrong, but it does feel like he's sort of being edged out of this 53-man roster. So here are my five surprise cut candidates. 
I don't necessarily agree with all these guys getting cut potentially, but they definitely fit the criteria. So just keep an eye on for these guys here. Ojemudia definitely feels super duper safe, but if he has another bad preseason game after week one, something to keep an eye on for sure. All right, that is going to do it for us on today's show. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you have not already, and we will keep you guys informed on the rest of the Broncos preseason news and rumors heading into the 2022 NFL regular season.